Well, welcome everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today for our webinar, Introducing DNA Star. Um, my name is Stephanie Costello, and I'll be coordinating the webinar today. Um, I'm here with Jackie Carvel. She's on our marketing team, and she'll walk you through our applications and give an overview of our products and support options. Um, you may have noticed that your phone's been muted. Um, if you have a question that you'd like to ask, um, simply type it into the chat dialog and send the chat excuse me, to the host. I'll then direct those questions to Jackie to be answered for the whole group. Um, if you have need any assistance during the webinar, um, you can also um, uh, email me at webinars at dnastar.com or again, send a chat message to me. And now I'll hand it over to Jackie. Thanks a lot, Steph. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my desktop here and pull open my presentation. All right, um, so to get started here today, I'll be giving some background on the company uh, and then getting right into the software itself. Uh, so as a little bit about us, we are a global software company headquartered here in Madison, Wisconsin. Our sales team, developers, and support network are all located here. So if you have questions, uh, we do have the full support staff to answer you and then use your feedback uh, to relay to the developers and make our so software even better for the upcoming release. We were born out of the E. coli lab of Dr. Fred Blattner, who was the professor of genetics at the University of Wisconsin in 1984. We built a strong reputation with our early products during the Sanger sequencing years that then continues on today. Uh, while still offering some of these classic sequence assembly and analysis tools, we have expanded into the realms of next-gen sequencing. Uh, and here we support all major next-gen sequencing platforms. In addition, we also now offer software to assist the work of structural biologists. And DNA Star products have long been established on the desktop computer, um, but are additionally available on the Linux cluster or on the DNA Star cloud. So DNA Star is the leader in citations and peer-reviewed journals. For the past 28 years, more researchers have cited DNA Star's software in scientific journals than in any, or than any other uh, commercial sequence analysis software that's on the market today. And these people that are using our software also have some great things to say. Uh, so here are a couple recent comments that we've received through Twitter. Uh, you can get in touch with us quickly across all our social media channels, which includes uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, and just let us know how DNA Star is working out for you. So who are these researchers that are using our software? And we support research going on all around the globe, uh, currently being located in over 90 countries. Uh, we also have customers in the pharmaceutical industry, uh, at government institutions, as well as commercial companies, and academic research labs. So traditionally, all of our software has been available on a desktop computer. And we've designed our software to be able to run uh, on the hardware that's available to most researchers. So for more detailed information on hardware tech requirements, uh, we'll talk about that uh, a little later as applied to our uh, genomics workflows. Um, but essentially, a computer configured to run um, complex next-gen assemblies that we'll talk about will cost just maybe a couple thousand dollars. So we're set up to run on simple and economical hardware on the desktop. Uh, in May of 2013, however, we expanded this traditional uh, software offering up to the DNA Star Cloud. And this service allows you to access DNA Star Laser Gene software anywhere with an internet connection. So some advantages to using the DNA Star Cloud offering include access to powerful hardware without having to purchase it, uh, the ability to run multiple jobs simultaneously, the ability to monitor your project from multiple devices, and really easy remote collaboration with your peers, as well as a variety of really flexible licensing options that we'll discuss in more detail. Uh, so you do have uh, different licensing options to choose from depending on whether you are interested in using our software either on the cloud or on the desktop. So on the cloud, your licensing options vary by time with the ability to purchase for a day, a week, a month, or a year. In addition, you can also customize the size of your cloud machine to your particular project. So we offer small, medium, and large cloud instances to offer the right hardware solution for your particular work. Uh, while a small instance can support projects like cloning, primer design, and Sanger assemblies, uh, a medium option can support projects on the caliber of uh, reference-guided exome assemblies or small de novo assemblies like E. coli, for an example. 
um, as well as the visualization of these assemblies here. And uh, the large instance that's available can handle projects like uh, larger genome assemblies, if you're working with a larger uh, model organism there. Um, so these various cloud licensing options offer you maximum flexibility, and they really do uh, customize your license to fit your particular project. However, when working with desktop software, we tend to offer perpetual licenses with annual support renewal plans. Now, these licenses have three different options that you can choose to customize. Now, first, our LaserGene software is available as a standalone license for Windows or Mac. This option is best for only one user and will install DNA Star software on a single computer for that person's use. Second, we have a network license option. And this license option allows you to install the software on as many computers as you wish, uh, but then choose the number of licenses that you would like to purchase. Then you have the flexibility to run up to your total number of licenses at any given time. Now you can run these licenses on all Macs, all Windows, or a combination of both platforms. That's really up to you. Uh, in this case, one desktop computer functions as a server for the network. So you don't need a high-end or a complicated computer system in order to implement this network option. We found that five user networks are usually a pretty good option to fit the needs of a small lab or department. Uh, finally, our site licenses have become a very popular option for medium to large organizations. And this purchasing option gives you an unlimited number of licenses. And you can choose to install on an unlimited number of computers. This option here is extremely cost effective and is really ideal for groups of labs or large departments um, or entire organizations. Uh, also, if you, know, you anticipate your, your particular uh, department or organization experiencing um, growth upcoming, this might be a good option for you to invest in. So after you choose your um, platform on the desktop or cloud, as well as your licensing option, our software is also broken down into four different suites, which I'll go through individually in a second. Uh, you can choose to purchase individual suites, combination of suites, or uh, when taken as a whole, all of the suites, which are known as DNA Star Laser Gene. So our cloning suite is our most basic suite option that we have available. And this particular suite allows access to various applications that support uh, some of our basic molecular biology techniques, such as virtual cloning workflows, sequence editing, and primer design. Uh, moving up from that, one of our larger suites, our evolution suite, was designed with evolutionary biologists in mind and features tools for performing multiple and pairwise sequence alignments. This suite also allows you to assemble contigs of Sanger sequences and identify genes, along with including the capabilities we discussed in the cloning suite. And our genomic suite provides all of the software necessary for next-gen sequence assembly and analysis. We support all major next-gen sequencing technologies and a variety of projects. Um, as we can see here, these projects include de novo or reference-guided genome assemblies, targeted resequencing, metagenome and population assemblies, large-scale multi-sample SNP analysis, uh, RNA-seq, chip-seq, and microRNA alignment. Uh, additionally, we also support workflows such as automated genome closure, uh, cancer genomic analysis, and clinical research analysis. Uh, so while we're discussing the genomic suite here, it's also appropriate to discuss some of our technical requirements and benchmarks as the uh, workflows for this particular suite are a little more complex where this is uh, particularly important. Uh, in looking at this diagram above here, we can see that there isn't a complicated hardware setup required for our various next-gen assemblies. Uh, we do recommend uh, 16 gigs of RAM as well as a quad-core 3 gigahertz processor. Uh, in addition, we also advise a 1 to 8 terabyte external hard drive, uh, depending on what particular project you're working with, uh, to serve as a scratch disk to store temporary files from these assemblies. Uh, finally, we also recommend a one terabyte external hard drive for storing output files from these assemblies. Uh, if we go ahead and look at our benchmarking data listed below, we can see the power of our next-gen assembler. Uh, and one of the most important um, benchmarks we have here in this table is that we can assemble the entire human genome in less than a day. 
And finally, our Structural Biology Suite provides tools for structural biologists to analyze protein sequences, uh, visualize macromolecular structure, predict epitopes, and align protein structures here. In addition, the Structural Biology Suite also offers access to NovaFold, which is one of our new protein structure prediction programs. So as you can see here from this Venn diagram, each of these suites is made up of several different applications. And we'll go ahead and jump into our software to briefly go through each of these applications in, in um, a broad overview and uh, give you an idea of what each application does and when you would opt to use these applications in your work. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of the uh, PowerPoint, PowerPoint here and bring up our first application. Uh, so the first uh, application I'd like to introduce here is our DNA Star Navigator. And this is your guide to all of the DNA Star applications that are available. And in this hub, uh, you can see a list of the DNA Star applications available to you, as well as access resources specific to each of these applications. So if I hover over an application here in the Navigator, I can see links to videos, tutorials, uh, and FAQs specific to that particular application. A uh, last nice feature of the Navigator is uh, our ability to access the help. And uh, this is really nice from the Navigator because it allows you to uh, use the search feature across all of the applications that are available. Uh, you can also click on any application within the Navigator to directly launch that particular application. So I'm going to close that down. And the first application, um, first set of applications I'm going to introduce are the basic applications that are included within the laser gene cloning suite here. Uh, keep in mind, uh, as we discuss the suites, that these particular applications are also included in all of the larger suites as well. Uh, but to get started, the first application here in the cloning suite is our Seek Builder application. And SeekBuilder is our application for sequence editing and annotation, uh, automated virtual cloning, and primer design. Uh, so we're currently looking at a sequence with features opened up uh, in the linear view of SeekBuilder here. Uh, as we can see on the left-hand side of the SeekBuilder interface, we have a variety of different views that we can implement here uh, in SeekBuilder. Uh, one of the first things I want to point out is from this particular view, we can very easily create PCR primer pairs for a region of interest. Uh, so I selected this, this feature right here, which, which I'm interested in, and I'll select priming, create primer pairs, select OK. And we can see that we've really easily, um, quickly created this, this set of PCR primers. Uh, so now I can go ahead in Seek Builder, um, choose to edit the primer as desired. Um, I can adjust the ends on this primer. Um, and really quickly and easily do any of the editing that, that we wish to do. Uh, aside from designing primers, SeekBuilder is also really great um, for working on virtual cloning projects. Uh, so what I've gone ahead and opened up here is uh, a expression clone that I've gone ahead and created already. Uh, we have a lot of different cloning options that are available. I can show you under this drop-down menu here. We have gateway cloning, TA cloning, uh, topo cloning. Uh, all available to you to use within, within Seek Builder. Uh, so these are very easy to create yourself for any kind of virtual cloning project. Uh, additionally, aside from cloning and uh, primer design, you are free to do any kind of annotation work or sequence editing while working around within the Seek Builder application. Uh, so moving on, uh, as another co component of the cloning suite, uh, this is our primer select application. And this is an application that's very useful for advanced primer design. Uh, now this application was our first application developed within LaserGene to do primer design work. And much of its basic primer design functionality has been replaced by the primer design capabilities of SeekBuilder, which we just looked at. Uh, however, we have some advanced primer functions housed within Primer Select, like adjusting some mispriming parameters and creating a primer catalog. So if you're working with a very difficult sequence or want to have a lot of in-depth primer modification options, Primer Select may be a good choice for you. Uh, so I've gone ahead and created a pair of primers here that we can see, and we're also looking at a list of uh, primer pair candidates that are available. I can also uh, choose to view reports on any of these primers. Um, 
and if I select uh, select a primer pair here, and then I click Edit, work on primer. I pull up this nice interface here where I can do all sorts of additional editing, uh, similar to what I worked on in Seek Builder, where I can induce mutations, see the effects of those mutations, and uh, do any other additional editing that I desire here. So uh, moving on from that, like with uh, Primer Select, uh, this is our Edit Seek application, and this is another one of our legacy programs. Uh, with much of its functionality additionally having been replaced by Seek Builder. However, we still include this application because it can be really useful as a uh, basic sequence editing tool and for importing and editing some less common file formats. Now, I won't spend much more time on this application, but just know that it's available if you do have some uncommon file formats that you'd like to convert or use. Uh, so now this wraps up our discussion of the applications within the cloning suite. And just to give a quick recap on that, those applications were Seek Builder, Primer Select, and Edit Seek, and will be included within all the subsequent suites we discussed today. Uh, Jackie, we did have one question. Um, someone asked, what file formats does um, DNA Star accept or work with? Oh, sure, that's a good question. Um, if I, I can show you best by going right back into Seek Builder here and uh, opening a project. So DNA Star supports a wide variety of different file formats, as we can see here. Um, we've got your GenBake files, your FASTA files, uh, many other different file types that, that um, you can go ahead and bring into any of these projects. Okay, thank you, Jackie. Yeah. All right. So moving on beyond the cloning suite, uh, I'd like to now talk about two applications that are not part of the cloning suite, but are a part of all the larger suite packages. Uh, so the first application I'm bringing up here is our Seek Ninja application. And this particular application is very useful uh, for when you need to do advanced editing of genome sequences and annotations. Uh, what you're essentially doing when using Seek Ninja is using this interface with a variety of helpful templates, as we can see on the side here, to help you create your own scripting functions. We can then flip back and forth between the visual view that we're looking at now, as well as the text view, to see what exact script that you are creating when you're using Seek Ninja. Uh, so to show you a quick example, I'll go back to the visual view here. And what I've done here is created a simple chain of functions that ultimately will define a sequence variable, extract a set of particular genes, uh, and then translate the output sequence and save this as uh, a second output file here. Uh, so we can see really how easy it is to construct complicated sequence editing chains right within this particular interface. And uh, other available functions uh, that we can see on the side include the ability to convert file formats, uh, batch edit and export annotations, merge and split sequence data, and transfer annotations between genome versions. And it's very easy to add or take away from our script that we've created here. Um, let's say, you know, after I've translated these genes, I uh, also want to convert the file type at the end. I can simply drag this function right onto the visual screen and then add this to our script. Uh, so that covers Seek Ninja here. And the second application that's also included across the evolution, genomics, and structural biology suites is our GenVision application. And GenVision is our genomic visualization application that's designed to support the creation of publication quality graphics. Uh, so what I have open here is a PDF um, that's been an output from our GenVision application. Um, and what we're looking at here is a nice circular map of the E. coli genome. Um, this particular application is endlessly customizable uh, and it has the ability to illustrate and visualize large and complex data sets. So just to recap from this particular section, the two applications not included in the cloning suite but that are included in all the other suites were both Seek Ninja and the GenVision application. So having said that, I'm now going to go ahead and delve into one of these larger suites here, uh, which is the Evolution Suite. Now, Megaline Pro, uh, the application we're currently looking at, uh, was released with LaserGene 11.2 in September with some vastly enhanced sequence alignment methods uh, and is the core foundation of this Evolution Suite package. 
Now, Megaline Pro supports both DNA and uh, protein sequence alignments using muscle, MOV, and clustal omega algorithms. And right now what we're looking at is a completed MOV alignment uh, that's been done in Megaline Pro. And uh, with this MOV alignment, we have the option to explore relationships between various aligned blocks. Um, in this particular alignment here, uh, we can see the sequences and how these have aligned in the sequence view, um, as well as analyze um, the percent matches in our consensus match histogram that we can see on the bottom of the screen. And as I roll over this consensus match histogram, I can see for each base in the sequence um, what the percent match was uh, at that particular location. Uh, in addition, we also have a variety of other views that are available within Megaline Pro. Uh, we can use the distance view um, to analyze distances between pairs of sequences here. Um, we can also use the tree view to create some phylogenetic trees to predict evolutionary relationships. And all of these particular views are customized and controlled by working in the style panel here to the right. Um, so as you can see within the style panel, we have a little tab for each of these views that are available. And within each of these tabs, we can go ahead and do any of our customization, um, customizing fonts, uh, calculations, metrics, um, even coloring. If I would like to color my sequence view differently, um, that's an option as well. Um, finally, all of the views that are here within the Megaline Pro interface uh, can be undocked or moved to customize the interface for uh, your particular research needs. So we just want to make it uh, you know, as easy for you to work around within your project as uh, you desire. Uh, so that covers our Megaline Pro application here. Uh, from there, the next application I want to mention as part of the uh, evolution suite here is our Megaline application. Now this is our first application to handle sequence alignment as a precursor to our recent Megaline Pro. Uh, like Megaline Pro, Megaline is an application for both DNA and protein sequence alignment, but does offer some uh, additional pairwise and multiple alignment methods. We can see a couple of them here. Uh, some of these methods include the Clustal method, uh, Jotun Hine, Wilbur Lippmann, uh, Martinez Needleman Wunsch, uh, Lippman Pearson, and dot plot analysis are all within Megaline. Uh, in addition, Megaline also has some bootstrapping capabilities which also differentiate it from Megaline Pro. Uh, and to wrap up our discussion of the applications within the evolution suite, I do want to touch on our GeneQuest application here. Uh, now, this application was built to help you find and annotate the genes within your sequence. So when you enter in a DNA sequence here uh, into the panel, you can apply many different analysis methods uh, from the left-hand side here, simply by dragging and dropping them onto the screen. Um, you can also use different methods to identify and annotate coding regions and other features of interest. Uh, and this here wraps up our discussion of the Evolution Suite. Uh, so as a reminder, this suite includes the cloning suite applications we discussed earlier, uh, as well as GenVision and SeekNinja, and then Megaline, Megaline Pro, and GeneQuest. Um, Jackie, someone had a question when you were going over Megaline Pro. Um, they were wanting to know um, how to um, get the images out, specifically like phylogeny, for publication. Sure, yeah. Um, these anything within uh, Megaline Pro can be exported and uh, used and integrated with uh, some of our other applications to create these publication quality graphics. And what's really nice, um, as I mentioned before, you know, having the style panel here is that if you want to export your tree, you can go ahead and customize um, lots of different options for how that tree looks right here within Megaline Pro. Great, thank you. Okay, so now I'm going to switch gears a little bit and start delving um, a little more into our laser gene genomic suite available here. Uh, as discussed earlier, this particular suite supports assembly and analysis of next-gen data. So the focal application within this suite is DNA Star's SeqMan Engine, and what we're, which is what we're looking at in this particular screen. And this is our application for next-gen sequence assembly. Uh, as we can see here, this is an extremely easy-to-use interface that allows you to go step-by-step step in setting up your assembly. 
So I'm going to go ahead and quickly walk you through the SeekMan Engine interface to show you the different options that are available. Uh, so I also wanted to point out um, that our assembler was rated number one for assembling Illumina and 454 data in two peer-reviewed articles, which are accessible on our website. Uh, so as you can see, this is, um, as we'll walk through this, this is an assembler that is very flexible in the terms of uh, different workflows that it supports. Uh, so the first, first screen we're here, we're on the welcome screen of SeekMan Engine, uh, and we're going to go ahead and create a new assembly project. However, it's important to keep in mind that if you're running a lot of assembly projects, rather than uh, go through this process many, many different times for each assembly you would like to do, um, you can load and run uh, existing scripts that you've already created once in SeekMan Engine. Uh, so the second uh, screen here is our project type, and this really speaks to the flexibility um, of our assembler here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select Genome Assembly, but we do uh, see that we do have a variety of different project types available, um, from metagenomics to uh, transcriptomes uh, to exomes, uh, just depending on what you're working with here. Uh, again, we do have several different assembly types, whether you're working with templated assembly or de novo assemblies. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we also have a gap closure option, uh, which helps automate uh, some of that work for you. Uh, but for, for the sake of example, I'm going to he go ahead and select the templated assembly here. Uh, and we can go ahead and uh, set up our project files, um, naming it, selecting a uh, place for it to save, and also selecting a temporary file location. Again, if you're in SeekMan Engine and you're curious as to what our technical requirements are that we discussed earlier in this webinar, we do have a nice link right here to our website where you can refresh yourself on that information. Uh, additionally, uh, we do have uh, this place for you to set up your template files. I'm just going to select a, a folder uh, just as an example here. Um, here, and then um, what we can do in this particular interface is go ahead and download genome template packages from our website. Uh, and these are freely available for download for use by anyone, and we do have these genome template packages available in a variety of different organisms. Uh, if you are doing work and uh, are interested in having one of these data packages created for your particular organism, uh, feel free to give us a call and we can help work with you on that. But all of these packages that we have available for download uh, utilize the dbSNP, the Cosmic, and the GURP um, databases here for information that you can bring into your assembly. Just going back to SeekMan Engine, uh, now we have the option here to input our sequence files. Uh, so as we can see from this drop-down screen, we do have a, a variety of different um, next-gen platforms that we support from Ion Torrent to Illumina to 454. Uh, so I can go ahead and select my applicable um, there um, and open up any of our unpaired or paired reads that we would like to use in this uh, experiment. And so finally, this brings us to our assembly options screen, which is the last screen in this user interface. Uh, right here, we're looking at the default options that were set up for SeekMan Engine. But I do want to point out that we do have some advanced assembly options available for you to use. Uh, so we can see that we have advanced options with the layout, um, alignment, as well as different SNP options available too. Uh, so while there's endless customization to be had within SeekMan Engine, um, we do have the default settings customized for the particular projects that you've been selected as you've been going through the wizard. So if you would really like to customize, that's great, but um, for most people, the default settings do work quite well for them. And so now we've created the script that we can see right here within SeekMan Engine. And we can see also um, that we have the option to save the script, as I mentioned earlier, so that we can uh, either import it to run the assembly again later, um, or if you run into any problems with your assembly, um, you can go ahead and send the script to uh, us at DNA Star, and we can help you troubleshoot um, any issues you have there. So simply to get started with this, all you would have to do is click Assemble, and then the uh, assembly will run for you. 
so that wraps up our SeekMan engine application. Um, like I said, as you can see, as we walked through this particular interface, uh, the assembler is extremely flexible in the terms of uh, the range of different workflows that it supports. So after you run all of your assemblies within SeekMan engine, uh, you would use our SeekMan Pro application to bring these assemblies in and visualize these particular assemblies. Uh, there are many different views available. Right now what we're looking at in SeekMan Pro is our alignment view of a contig. And this alignment view allows you to examine the details of your sequence alignment, um, traces, features, uh, individual consensus conflicts. Um, we can see you know, the coverage at different locations here within the consensus. Uh, additionally, we also do have the strategy view uh, available here, um, where you can see an overview of coverage, different conflicts, uh, paired-end data consistency, and different consensus features. Uh, other options that are available within the Megaline or within sorry SeekMan Pro application uh, are the abilities to discover and review different SNPs, uh, design sequencing primers to fill in various assembly gaps and assemble Sanger sequencing data if desired. Uh, as a last note on SeekMan Pro, while this application is integral to the next-gen analysis pipeline uh, and included within the genomic suite, it is also uh, included in the evolution suite that we already discussed as well. So the final application within our next-gen pipeline is our ArraySTAR and QSeq applications, which I have open right here. Now, our ArraySTAR application is our software for large-scale, multi-sample variation comparisons and handles workflows including gene expression experiments as well as sequence variation analysis. Uh, as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen here, uh, ArraySTAR started off as a microarray project but has since then expanded to be able to support these large multi-sample workflows and a variety of other different projects that are available. Um, you can also see up at the top that you know this is designated ArraySTAR and QSeq. Uh, I wanted to point out that QSeq uh, is fully integrated within ArraySTAR um, and offers tools that support RNA-seq and ChIP-seq analysis within the ArraySTAR application. So taken as a whole, uh, ArraySTAR and QSeq are incredibly useful for visualization tools. So I'm going to open up another ArraySTAR project here that I've already set up. Uh, we can see that uh, we're looking right now at the experiment list view within ArraySTAR. Uh, I have currently eight different human exomes uh, that I've done in assembly and then set up as separate experiments uh, within the experiment list here. This experiment list allows you to quickly and easily organize uh, many different samples or experiments that you're working with here for comparison. Um, Additionally, this has many different visualization tools, such as a scatter plot, which you can work with, um, apply different statistics to. Um, you can easily create different gene sets or SNP sets. Uh, so I've gone ahead and created uh, three different gene sets here. Uh, and additionally, we do have a great Venn diagrams view, where you can, again, use this to compare and analyze different gene sets or SNP sets to see uh, what, what might be common among uh, different samples here. Additionally, there are also some other views, such as heat maps, um, the ability to look at gene ontology um, for this workflow. Um, but it's very easy. Um, to use ArraySTAR to work with and manage these large amounts of data uh, in these multi-sample data sets. So with that, I can wrap up our next-gen discussion with uh, the genomic suite. And as a reminder, this suite included our cloning suite applications, uh, GenVision and SeekNinja, as well as SeekMan Engine, SeekMan Pro, and ArraySTAR. Uh, so now we'll go ahead and switch gears to discuss the last few remaining applications that are found within our structural biology suite. So the application I'm going to open up here is our protein application. And we can see that this looks pretty similar to uh, GeneQuest. Uh, so this is our initial jump into the world of proteomics uh, around that time. Uh, this software application provides you with tools to locate antigenic determinants, uh, predict protease digestion patterns, and analyze secondary structural characteristics, as well as different physiochemical properties of protein sequences. So right now we're looking at a human calmodulin sequence um, 
And again, like GeneQuest, there are various different method options that are available on the left-hand side of the screen uh, that we can go ahead and uh, just drag out on, onto uh, the interface here to look at those particular methods. Uh, but I won't spend much more time on protein because I would like to get in some of our uh, newer structural biology applications. So what I'm opening up here is protein 3D. And uh, the capabilities uh, here in protein were significantly enhanced when we did go ahead and develop protein 3D. And this is our application for exploring macromolecular structure, motion, and function. So in looking at this interface here, we can see that there are many different panels um, of interest here. So I'll, I'll quickly go through some of these panels to clarify this interface a little bit. Uh, so the first panel that we're looking at right here is our structure view. And the structure view is useful for rotating or uh, zooming in and out of the structure as desired. So really just helping you um, visualize the structure you're working with in the optimal way. Uh, below the structure view here, we can see our sequences view, which will highlight um, the sequence of the protein as well as alpha helices and uh, beta sheets here. Uh, behind the structure view here, we do have the analysis view, which I'll access from the analysis tab. And this highlights many different analysis methods that you can apply to your protein structure. Uh, so if I look on the right-hand side of the screen here, we can see the methods panel that's available. And one particular method of interest I want to point out um, that's been enhanced recently is our B-cell epitope prediction method. Uh, so by clicking that, that checkbox within this methods panel, I've gone ahead and added this to our analysis view. So I'll scroll, scroll down uh, and we can see that this B-cell epitope prediction method was added. Uh, any of these analysis views, you can go ahead and expand out uh, for more details and information on uh, that particular method that you applied to your sequence there. Uh, again, similar to Megaline Pro, there also is a style panel uh, here within Protein 3D. Uh, so I can go ahead and adjust uh, many different options for looking at or analyzing our structures. Um, really just, again, offering optimal customization for your particular project. Uh, so again, in Protein 3D, uh, I did want to point out it also offers an extensive motion library uh, where you can browse and search uh, hundreds of animated and annotated macromolecular conformational changes. So that's also a nice little extra input into the Protein 3D interface here. Uh, so finally, the last application I'd like to talk about today is our NovaFold application. And NovaFold is housed within Protein 3D, so I'm going to go ahead and expand that up here. Uh, it's in this bottom tab. Uh, now, NovaFold was introduced uh, very recently, just this past July, and is our protein structure prediction program. And it is housed within Protein 3D for visualization purposes but it does employ the Amazon Cloud for the intense calculations required of the application. Uh, as such, there are flexible licensing options similar to those, uh, those on the cloud that we discussed earlier to purchase NovaFold, which you can purchase by prediction or by time spent with the product. Uh, so if we open up one of the uh, sample predictions that are uh, provided with NovaFold here. We're in preview mode, so I opened up this sample prediction. Uh, we can see that some information comes up in the details panel over here on the right-hand side. So I'm going to go ahead and expand that details panel here uh, and click on this predicted model to open it up in the, uh, the view. Um, so as we can see here um, with this particular protein, this does provide us with uh, a nice model. Um, as we can see on the side here in the results tab, um, it does come with several different statistics for analysis, such as the C-score, the TM score, and the RMSD score. Additionally, if your structure prediction returns multiple models, uh, as it often does, they will be color-coded um, in green, orange, or red to let you know the caliber of the model and uh, help you decide which particular model uh, is probably best. Uh, and additionally, you can also apply all of the previously mentioned analysis methods of Protein 3D um, 
as well as different style methods to any of these predicted models. Uh, so this wraps up our structural biology suite. Uh, as a mention on that, uh, this suite includes all of our cloning suite options, uh, as well as GenVision and SeekNinja, and then finally Protein, Protein 3D, and then access to the NovaFold application. Uh, Jackie, we had one question. Um, someone wanted to know about our free trials, whether they include um, different suites or applications. Sure, sure. Yeah, you can request a fully functional 30-day uh, free trial from us, uh, including all of our applications. Uh, and what's really nice about these fully functional free trials is that uh, you are able to use your own data uh, in there so you can really see how our applications will work for your, your own use there. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Um, so before I go ahead and wrap up the webinar for today, I would like to uh, point to our support options that are available on our website. Uh, which I'll open up here. Um, so under the support tab here on our website, we do have a variety of resources available for your use. Uh, if I select on the videos, we have over 200 videos currently posted on our website um, here for you on a variety of different topics. Um, ranging across all of the applications we discussed today. Uh, additionally, if there is an application that particularly interests you, you can also select to find the videos by that particular application. Uh, additionally to the video resources, we do have written tutorials available for all of the applications discussed today, as well as some online help, uh, again, across all of the applications to really specifically answer your questions here. Uh, if I keep the support tab open for a couple seconds for you to really look at it, um, there are many helpful links available here, uh, such as FAQs, uh, the tech requirements we discussed earlier, uh, archived newsletters, and the option to subscribe to our newsletter if you aren't a part of our mailing list already, and many, many more. Uh, I'll also go ahead and show you the webinars page um, where you can access any of our previous webinars. Uh, this webinar will be posted tomorrow up here on our webinars page, and where you can check back here for uh, any any additional webinars scheduled in the future. Uh, for the latest updates on DNA Star, I would encourage you to subscribe to our social media channels as well as our newsletter. In particular, I'd like to point out our uh, YouTube channel here. Uh, subscribing to our YouTube channel will give you the first look at any new uh, videos, webinar recordings, and workflows. Uh, in addition, uh, if I look at some of the playlists that we have organized on our YouTube channel here, we also additionally have subtitled videos in a variety of different languages to broaden our support to customers around the globe. Uh, we'll, we'll also be uh, expanding upon these videos uh, soon. That's all I have to discuss here today. You can refer back to our website for more information on all of the applications that we've looked at. Uh, while you're there, I would also encourage you to check out comments from, from our customers. Uh, our software is very easy to use and has an excellent support system behind it to uh, support your research needs. So I'll take any additional questions at this time. Yeah, I think we're we're good. I don't have any additional questions um, to throw out to the whole group. Um, thanks, Jackie. Um, it's very helpful. Um, there were a couple questions that were more technical. Uh, what we'll do is we'll have someone respond to you personally after the webinar. We'll send you an email um, um, or give you a call. If you think of other questions later, you can always email those to webinars at dnastar.com. Um, and again, as Jackie mentioned, check our webinars page for any future upcoming webinars. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today.